does. I heard it. Test, one, two, three, test. Okay, we're going to go ahead and start this meeting. I'm going to call the meeting um, to order at 6 o'clock sharp. I would like, uh, we need to adopt the agenda. I move to adopt the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5 to 0. Let's go ahead and say the pledge. So uh, do we have any questions on the uh, meeting minutes? If not, I'll take a motion to, adopt, uh, to approve the meeting minutes. I move to approve the meeting minutes as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 
Aye. Motion carries five to zero. So we have some current events. I think we have to approve the uh, the minutes from the special board meeting as well. Oh, you're right. Okay, there's two of them. Any questions on those? Nope. All right, we'll take a motion. I move to approve the meeting from the special board uh, meeting as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. All right, so superintendent report. Uh, a couple different things to talk about and, and some recognitions. First of all, you'll see the enrollment numbers. You're, you're not seeing a comparison against last year because at this time last year was when COVID-19 started and there was significant things going on and, and so we didn't track uh, attendance. The, the issue with the new system we have, Synergy, is once you address at the end of the year, take everybody out, it, it, it goes back and fills in the same number across the entire year. It doesn't give you what your numbers were at a specific time. So for the next um, couple meetings, you're not gonna see a comparison like you've seen in the past. A couple of things I will say, uh, in terms of the numbers uh, for the district at 4394, those are the highest numbers we've had uh, this year. So that's a, that's a positive uh, in terms of enrollment, number of uh, families and kids coming back, um, coming off of spring break. In many cases, just in looking at the numbers uh, down on the grade levels, uh, it is the lower grades that are tending to get most of the kids coming back, which is what we would anticipate pr proportionally to the number of kids that were missing. Um, so th that provides that. The cohort numbers, again, because there's not comparison, ours aren't as legitimate. And then we have the elementary enrollment uh, numbers. Uh, what I'd like to do is- oh, Greg, we ha I, yeah. I have a question. Are those um, in person or are those online or is that a combination? This, it's a combination. It's, it's all the students that we have in the district uh, that are registered with us. I and mean, then I'm talking about the preschool and kindergarten. Yes, those are a combination of both. Okay. For every single kid in the district, they're enrolled with us and then we just de designate them in the system as either virtual or in person. Right. But when we pull these numbers, it's all of them. Okay. Um, I would like uh, three young men to come on up. Um, these are from the wrestling team. Uh, Bubba Panima, did I, I'm not sure if I said that right. Seth Fernandez and Cody Owen. And I will explain a few things. have you stand up right up here. Uh, what we want to do is recognize these three gentlemen. Their coach, uh, Mr. Miller, could not be here tonight. Um, but the team as a whole uh, finished fifth uh, in state. And Cody earned second place in the 170-pound division. Seth won the state championship at 152 pounds and competed, uh, completed an undefeated uh, season. Last year, he finished second. And he also placed at the state, uh, was a state placer his sophomore and his freshman year. And Bubba was a state champion in the heavyweight. Again, an undefeated season. He was also a state champion last year uh, as a junior and placed third as a sophomore. And what we're trying to do is make sure we recognize those students that are outstanding uh, in their endeavors. Uh, we started a tradition with the girls cheer team of getting a something, something special for state champions. So Bubba and Seth will have a little something special coming from us here in the next couple months. We have to work on a few things with it. Um, but again, our kids compete state, locally, nationally, and this is an example of uh, outstanding kids doing an outstanding job, and we just want to take a moment to say congratulations and thank you for the job you did. <laughs> okay, I'm sure you're ready to sit down now. <laughs> Good job, guys. Congratulations. Got to tell you, job, Bubba. We also uh, want to recognize and we'll have them. Uh, I don't know if they're here. We may have had a uh, uh, communication gap, but we had uh, the Council of Exceptional Children's recognized as teachers, related service providers, and administrators for their excellence in working with students in special education programs. The focus of the awards program is based on a commitment to inclusive practices for all students, including students with disabilities. Our district was represented by four staff members who were selected as finalists and one who was selected as the winner. The names and the awards are, and I'm not sure if they're all here because I don't know how well we communicated that, but Renee Adams is the CEC Outstanding General Education Teacher Award winner. She's a sixth grade teacher over at Symington. Laura Ridge, I know is here. She was uh, a finalist for CEC Outstanding Administrator. Laura, you can stand up. So you don't have to. <laughs> 
Dr. Brenda Step Scepter was a CEC Outstanding Related Service Provider finalist and the district, phys district Physical Therapist. And Jess Berman is a CEC Outstanding General Education Teacher finalist and she's a math teacher at the high school. Again, not only our kids but our, st our uh, staff uh, does amazing things uh, every single day, a lot of times quietly and out of the limelight, so it's always nice when we're able to take a few moments to recognize them and thank them for, for the outstanding job that, uh, they're doing. So to those individuals, congratulations and great job. <laughs> and, and that's all I have for tonight. So we'll do a focus on students with the traditional academy. And Mr. Green, please. Madam President, members of the board, Dr. Wyman, it's a pleasure to be here today. I'm going to call up a couple of very, very special teachers up here, kindergarten teachers. Let's give a huge welcome to Ms. Gonzalez and Ms. Allison. <laughs> while, they're, while they're coming on up, I just want to share, I think it's uh, early childhood, we all know how important it is. Raise your hand if you remember your kindergarten teacher. <laughs> Raise your hand if that uh, helped you develop a lifelong learn, uh, love of learning. Because kinder teachers are the best. We love them. And uh, Combs Traditional Academy happens to have two very phenomenal kinder teachers. We're very grateful. I could go on and on. But uh, we're gonna, we have a little video. So... Um, you want to go ahead and roll that, and then I'll, we'll, we'll let uh, the kinder teacher speak a little bit. Craig, we need sound. year teaching kindergarten here but my eighth year teaching kindergarten overall and I believe that having um, the students full day um, with a certified teacher is very beneficial to their education because it helps to build on relationships um, it helps the teacher get to understand who the student is and it helps the student understand who the teacher is also so being able to work with each other all day long helps and it helps build um, what we want to do in the classroom. This is my first opportunity to be with the kindergartners all day. Um, the last two years, I had 52 kindergartners throughout the years, uh, 52 sets of parents. This year, having one classroom, I'm really able to not only focus on the connections with my kids, but also the families as well. Being able to have more time to um, make that phone call and share the positives or concerns that I might have um, for the kids and just being able to spend more time with communication. Is it, is it important that you're here all day to learn? Is that important? Tell me more about that. Sawyer, why is that important? Because you have to learn if you're going to do something. Yeah. Very good. Hi, Joseph. Tell us what you like about kindergarten. Um, I like that I don't speak very long. It's funny. Oh, great. I like it really. So you have a nice teacher and you love to read? I love to read it. You love to read everywhere? Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. And how about you guys? Raise your hand and tell me what you liked about kindergarten. Eliza, what do you like about kindergarten? teacher for the entire day is that it's helped to build their endurance for the school day for learning it helps them build their endurance to be able to show their skills for learning from the time they arrive until the time they leave but then also 
also those self-regulation skills that help them name their feelings and stay calm um, or problem solve with peers and the classmates. But when there's that one adult with them from the start of the day to the end of the day, that teacher can support them, be aware when maybe that endurance is struggling, and then find ways to support them so that they can stay focused on having a complete learning day with us. All right, well, Madam President and members of the board, Dr. Wyman, I'm really happy to be here tonight to just say thank you for giving us the opportunity to be with these kiddos all day long. Not only um, is it so important to have that time to make those connections with our kids and our families, but just having so much more time to be able to work in small groups, work on one-on-one, -on -one and um, meet with kids and conference about their goals and and just having that opportunity. Um, the last two years, having two different classrooms with 52 kindergartners, they were with me three hours a day. And if you count out recess and lunch and specials, they really weren't with me all that long to be able to really work with them. So although this year has been a challenge, we have seen a ton of growth with these kids already. So I'm really excited to see what happens over the next few years with these kiddos. So thank you. So, uh, Madam President, and board of the or members of the boards, and Dr. Weinman, thank you um, for allowing us to be here and speak to you about the importance of a uh, full day kindergarten, and not only the full day kindergarten, but a full day certified teacher with these kiddos. A lot of times, um, these kids come into us not having any um, education background as far as like preschool or anything like that. So, for us to be able to work with them and get them comfortable with school and teaching them that learning is fun. And so that's one of the main things that I think is very important for us to be able to work with these kids all day long. And like Lisa said, you know, our scores have improved. Um, behavior is down as far as I know. <laughs> um, and so I think just having that one teacher who can really give them the support that they need to learn is, is very beneficial. Thank you. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank and I you. can't wait till we get hugs at this year's Hawk Hawk. Let's, <laughs> let's give them all a hug. We feel like they're, they're kids and kids have the biggest hearts. So thank you. Oh, I'm, I'm not done now. I'm not done. So, um, so yeah, w w I, really to reiterate what they said, it's, it's our district's commitment to early childhood and it's appreciated and the work they do, um, it, it's priceless and they do a phenomenal job. Strong instructional leaders, but even more than that, the, the social and emotional, the whole child, they do a great job. So thank you. Now I'm gonna move on to a couple people I wanna recognize. And I'm gonna start with, uh, I'm gonna start with our volunteer, but not, not really a volunteer, she's also an employee. But just the definition of going above and beyond, showing initiative, and, and it's a, a sense of pride in our school that we all really, really appreciate. So I'm gonna, uh, bring her up here and then read some things that'll make her blush. So come on up, Cheryl Tapia. <laughs> Give her a huge round of applause. <laughs> Dr. Zusik, if you make this look easy, but come on up here and then <laughs> smile. What do we say? Um, okay, so I've got a few statements I wanna read. Um, CTA is blessed to have Cheryl Tapia as our volunteer and librarian. She comes in to volunteer her time to help our students and teachers. She helps progress monitor our students and assist teachers in any way possible. Cheryl has also played a key role in getting our library painted with a beautiful mural. She's a great team player and an asset to CTA. I'm honored to call Cheryl my friend. 
and that's from a first grade teacher, Shailene Rosenbaum. Um, we also have this. If you ask our students, they would tell you we have a full-time librarian. Mrs. Tapia is available during the morning hours to return books, to talk with kids about books, or just connect with them as a, as a caring adult. Cheryl has gone above and beyond the part-time librarian role. Her, set, her, her skill sets, excuse me, allow us to go uh, to her for a number of duties, and believe me, we put her to work big time. Um, we know talent when we see it and we utilize it. Um, progress monitoring the reading skills of our virtual students, uh, covering the front office so staff can eat lunch, covering the front office when we need a substitute, serving on our campus um, uh, positive behavioral interventions and supports team that we have. She's a, a member of that as well. And, um, and she's taken the lead uh, with the local artist that the other person mentioned, um, which is a friend of hers, but she got it all connected and made our library just beautiful. Maybe we can do a board meeting there sometime or come by and check it out. Um, we'll do story time for you. Uh, I'm grateful for the professionalism and compassion she brings to Cone's Traditional Academy students, staff, and families. So big round of applause to Cheryl Tapia. I told you I'm very loquacious, um, passionate about recognizing these people. We, we have one more. Now, for photos, does she stay up here? Oh, we're good, okay. All right, the, the next person we wanna recognize is one of those people that makes a huge impact. And I, when I say that in, in all aspects, in leadership, in instruction, um, in influencing and empowering and inspiring everyone to be great. And that's really what good leadership is. Our curriculum and instruction department is the strongest in Arizona, maybe the world. And she's a, she, she truly is a leader amongst them. Um, so Casey Bates, come on up here and I'll embarrass you too. Okay, I'll read a couple comments here. Closer and All right, without a doubt, I firmly know that our students' academic success and growth at CTA is a direct result of the collaboration Casey has with our teachers. She works along with us to implement quality instruction. Over the past few years, Casey has led us in multi-tiered system of supports, or MTSS, data-driven discussions to better understand student growth and gaps. She is a leader on campus by modeling heartfelt listening and mindful responses. Our campus professional development has been relevant and actionable. As her teammate, I value the lens she uses to view the whole child, allowing us to look at all needs and strengths. Through her words and actions, we feel the care she has for our entire campus, whether it be her sustained positive attitude or sharing her freshly made caramel popcorn. That, that was from Ms. Thompson, and you can tell because it's articulately written, beautifully written. Um, here's another one, and that's, oh, where do I start to talk about how amazing Casey is? She is always there for us and willing to help in any way possible. Her knowledge as a literacy coach is top notch. You can ask her anything, and she has an answer to, and, or finds one real quick. She always has a smile on her face and can brighten any room. Casey is always prepared for our professional development days, and we love her treats too. Her dedication is inspiring. I wanna be like Casey when I grow up. <laughs> that, was, that was from Shaylin again. And uh, I'll share that um, she empowers and inspires me every day. And literacy is clearly her passion. She 
this is, it's her passion, and I think she probably dreams in strategies to get our kids to read. Her, her skill level and her knowledge is through the roof, but it's also her, her willingness to share with us and always have an answer. Just today, she, she went and did a bunch of research and took a lead on something that just came out. And she was an expert and she knew all sorts of stuff and was able to answer questions. And if she couldn't, she'd find out. That's just every day we get with Casey. Very proud of her and we, we um, really appreciate you, Casey. Madam President, members of the board, Dr. Wyman, it's, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you. Thank you. So we have student of the month. Yes, first we'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Rich Ruiz, who's representing Banner tonight. We'll give Mr. Ruiz a few moments to speak about what's happening at Banner. He runs the medical imaging senior manager and radiation safety officer. So thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you, Madam President, members of the board, Dr. Wyman, audience. Uh, thank you guys uh, first for having me here. It's an honor. I knew this gathering was going to be very inspiring, and so, and wow, so far it has been. I brought my own children just so they can be inspired as well by these students that we're going to recognize tonight. I think it's uh, wise to always get your children, uh, some other people to, to inspire them than just mom and dad. So I'm happy that they're going to see these kids get these awards. But a quick uh, update about our uh, facility over there at Banner Ironwood is uh, we're growing, and I don't know if any of you have been there, hopefully not, right? But if you have, um, I, I, we wanna make sure that you guys are getting the best care possible. It's very important for us to, to allow you guys, I'm a member of this uh, neighborhood as well, this community, and we wanna give the best care possible. So that is our goal, that is our mission. We are getting new equipment, we're hiring new staff, we're building out floors and extending walls so we can offer you guys the best care possible. So. Um, I'm going to leave cards up uh, on the table over here. So if you guys have any questions, if you guys have any concerns, good and bad, we want to hear those, okay? So um, thank you. That's my update for the facility. Thank you very much. And we'll ask Dr. Duplicis to come up, and between the two of you, we'll recognize our students of the month. Rich, thanks for your help. Madam President, board members, Dr. Wyman, as I say at every board meeting, thank you for the opportunity. This is the best part of my day and always the best part of my week. So could I please have Siriana Morphin come up from Combs High School? Look at everybody. I've taught them to smile through their eyes. So Siriana Morphin is an awesome student. She's about to complete Mrs. Belshi's nursing assistant program and has been an athletic trainer aide for four years. She's super smart and funny, and I would trust her with my life, says Mrs. Worthington. <laughs> She's always working ahead and planning out the next steps and will be an amazing healthcare provider, right? You got that, right? Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure, Rich, you had that. Congratulations, Siriana. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Could I have Malaya Sanders come up from Combs Middle School? There you go, there you go. Smile with those eyes. Malaya is a very quiet young lady who can be counted on to complete her work consistently. She is unable, if she's unable to finish an item in class, she can always be counted on to turn it in when she gets home. She's reliable and has great integrity. She's both responsible trustworthy and deserves this honor. I am pleased, says Mrs. Whitsitz, and proud to have had her as one of my students for the last two years. She shines above the rest. Congratulations, young lady. <laughs> Could I have Gabrielle Figueroa come up from CPA? There you go, awesome job. Gabrielle is a trustworthy student. I can always trust Gabrielle to complete her work, says Mrs. Hedrick. He Hedrick. Even if she needs to do work at home, she will monitor her progress and make sure she's all caught up. 
She's the kind of student that I can always trust to help out when there is a substitute. She's honest, kind, and hardworking. She's one of the great leaders of the class and is always willing to go above and beyond to always do the right thing. Congratulations, Gabrielle. Could I have Miss Madison Bowers from Ranch Elementary come on up? Okay. Mrs. Fajardo, who is here tonight, where are you at? There you are, there you are. Okay. Nominated Madison Bowers for the Student of the Month. Madison has shown the characteristic trait of trustworthiness right from the beginning. Madison is a peer that others can look up to and they can count on. She's very kind, fair, and honest, whether in the classroom or on the playground. Madison follows not only the class rules, but the school rules and expectations and always has a positive attitude. Madison is always willing to help fellow peers or adults and does it with such respect and a smile on her face. She's smiling right now. Madison is a valued member of the class and we are all extremely proud of her. Congratulations, Madison. Could I have Charlie Shadle come up from Harmon Elementary? Ready? Charlie's a wonderful kindergarten student at Harmon Elementary. Her friends can always count on her and she demonstrates the ability to keep her promises and always tells the truth and asks for help when needed. I have a few, a few students in class that need assistance getting around across campus and she's always willing to help. I'm also very proud of how wonderful she has done this year and the growth she has shown here in kindergarten. Thank you for being a wonderful role model to your peers. And that was from Mrs. Flint. Congratulations. I'm pretty sure I need to know where she got her shoes because I'm thinking I can pull that off too. So <laughs> they're pretty good. Could I have Anthony Perez come up from Symington? Good job. Anthony is in Katie Lucas's preschool class and Katie says that Anthony is responsible and always sets a good example in the classroom. He is eager to learn and participates in activities throughout the day. He's kind and is a good friend to all his classmates. Anthony sets a positive example and we are all very proud of the growth he's made in preschool. Congratulations, Anthony. Could I have Caden Williams come up from Ellsworth? Caden is really blossoming this year in school, and we are so proud of the progress he's made socially. I know that I can trust Caden to always do the right thing, even if it's hard, a hard thing to do. He's become an advocate for himself, and I love that he has found his voice. He's also been a great example in his classmates regarding classroom rules and procedures. I'm so thankful that Caden is a member of our classroom community this year, and that's from Mrs. Eckhoff. Congratulations, Caden. Parents, now is a great time to get pictures as we move into the second half of the agenda. And then afterwards, you're more than welcome to be excused if you wish. Thank you.
Good job, Jeff. Are we ready? Very loquacious and articulate. Very well done. <laughs> okay, um, let's go to the governing board members update. So, um, Chad, do you have anything? Not at this time? No, Madam okay. President. Let's see, uh, I know, Bob? Yes, I just would like to give a, a brief update. Um, I got on the board in January of 2015, and in 2017, 18, and 19, I assisted ASBA by being a member of their finance committee. I wanted to do it again last year, but with the pandemic, I'm not even sure if the, if the committee met. I volunteered again this year, but they had enough people, and they asked me to be on the scholarship committee. So the scholarship committee met uh, last week. There were 13 applicants. Uh, the scholarship awarded was for someone, a senior with meeting certain qualifications that would go into education. There were three of the 13 that stood out. We narrowed it down to two, and out of those two, one had more financial need than the other, and we awarded that person. I don't think the announcement has been made yet, so I can't tell you that person's name, but I just wanted to let you know that ASBA is doing good things for our students. Nice. Okay. Um, Steven. Nope. Laura. That Sorry. would be no. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, do we have any public comment? All right. Moving right along. Okay. So now we need, do we have any, um, Questions on the consent agenda? Okay. None? No. We're all good? Okay, uh, so I then. How what? come I wasn't invited to Tennessee? <laughs> 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 I've never been there. Well, it's not been approved yet, so, oh, okay. you know. Well, right. you can <laughs> hop in your car and go. <laughs> okay. That looks like a lot of fun. <laughs> okay, so I'll need a motion. I move to approve the um, consent agenda as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. Now within this consent agenda, personnel, do you want to? Yes, um, we have, uh, as you know, Carla Slavisky is gonna be retiring. How much time you got left? <laughs> Are you counting the days or what? <laughs> I see. <laughs> but uh, we did, uh, we posted the position and, and we had a committee uh, interview and, and you approved in the consent agenda, uh, Ms. Julie Cook to, to replace Carla and we, Julie is here and we want to give her a few minutes just to introduce herself and to let you know who she is. And she will be beginning July 1st, but we're in a transition phase where she's kind of working with us and, and we're kind of trying to figure out a way to make sure that uh, Carla can impart uh, the vast amount of knowledge she has to, uh, to Julie, but yeah. we'll have Julie come up you and introduce herself. You might as well get, get used to coming up and speaking with <laughs> <Yeah>. to us. <coughs> we, we could install a direct line to Carla's house. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would be appreciated. Like a, like a red line or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <For a> pre <laughs> <laughs> Madam President, members of the board, Superintendent Wyman, members of the audience, um, First of all, it's very hard to follow the show that just happened with all of your right. wonderful staff and students, <laughs> but we'll do my best. Um, first of all, I just wanna say thank you for your time and consideration tonight. Um, with your approval, I am very excited about coming over to the J. O. Combs Unified School District team. As we know, Carla is a wealth of knowledge and I hope to absorb all of that in the very few weeks before she does decide to retire and do something fun. But what I can say is the director of business services position offers a wonderful opportunity to me and I thank you for that. I get to work with an award-winning team and I also get to be part of this school, district, this school district's very, very exciting future. So I thank you. Thank you, thank you. welcome aboard. <laughs> okay, so these next discussion items, um, action items, most of them I think are just a review of what we did last. Yes, we, we presented at the at the twenty fourth, okay. and now it's just a formal action so to start moving forward. Unless you need clarification, they should go. The, right, the first one, just just so we're all on the same page for the very first one, is the FFCRA. And if you remember, the board approved the FFCRA in January through April, or excuse me, through March in mm -hmm. the March, and we said we bring it back. The only right. thing I can tell you with that approval, uh, uh, the recommendation is approved to approved through June 30. 
we're really not, it's not impacting us at all right now. It's really more of something for our staff in the event something occurs. We have had since, uh, since the last report where we gave you numbers, I think it's only been one situation. Uh, so we've not had any other situations. That individual was able to telecommute, so actually it didn't cost us anything. I would anticipate, knocking on wood, um, even if it's fake, I would anticipate that this is really gonna ha have nominal uh, impact on us uh, because uh, we're not seeing the, the, the wave and, and, and the vaccines, uh, but it's just a, a gesture to our st uh, staff to let them know that, that uh, we still uh, value them and understand that this is a difficult situation if they happen to uh, 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 pick up COVID-19. So that would be the reason for the uh, recommendation to push through to June 30. You could theoretically push it through to September because the American Rescue Plan does take this through to uh, the end of September, but then that would be the end of it. But at this point, the recommendation from administration is just through to June, the end of June. Okay, any discussion on that? You guys have any questions, comments, concerns? No, just thanks for bringing it back again. I know that when we originally talked about it, we were a little concerned about what you know impact it might have. And so I think it's good that we are taking a second look at it with you know, a right. better perspective than I, we had I agree. several months ago. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and do a motion on that. Yeah, so I move to approve um, the continuation of the extension of FFCRA through June 30th, 2021 as presented. I'll okay. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. Okay. Discussion and consideration of approval of the 21-22 salary schedule. Uh, these would just be the salary schedules with the increases that we talked about. The one thing I would make uh, note of, uh, one I presented to you, the increase for uh, the classified staff. I did not mm -hmm. move the decimal place over the correct amount, and thank you to Daniel Watkins for, for pointing out the error. So the actual increase on the support staff, what they will receive is, is, higher, is higher than what was presented. Um, uh, 1.7, 2.0, and 4.0 is, is what the actual increase would be, which puts it in line with, uh, especially the, the, the other two groups, or the second two groups, the second two bands, puts it more closely in line with what uh, the rest of the staff is receiving. And the overall increase, depending on what you do with some of the, the stipend request, would put them in line with the rest of them and still accomplish the exact same goals. It doesn't cost any more. The math was done correctly. It was just an error of moving over a decimal place. So I would recommend approval as presented. Anybody have any questions on that? Comments, concerns? Nothing? Okay, let's go for it then. I move to adopt the 2021-2022 salary schedules as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. 8.3, uh, approval of COVID stipend. Uh, it's exactly the same as was presented uh, last time. The, the couple <laughs> things, just so you're aware, this is just approval of the concept. Uh, given some of the things that are going on between HR and payroll, uh, what we'll bring on these on both 8.2 and 8.3 is uh, next month you will actually get an agenda item that speaks to exactly what the dollar amount is for, for every single employee based on both of these these uh, situations. And that's just in response to uh, uh, legal advice that we that you're fully aware of what the increases are, but we wanted to approve it in concept first, and then we'll go ahead and calculate the, the actual uh, dollar amount to increase for everybody. Uh, and that will be brought back uh, next, next month, uh, just, just so you understand. But otherwise it's what was presented, so I would recommend approval as presented. Okay, any questions? Nope, all right. I'll need a motion. All right, I move to approve the one-time COVID-19 stipend for all staff as presented. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. Um, 8.4, approval of retention stipend. Uh, the only uh, component on this one, otherwise it's, it's as presented. These are the very high numbers uh, because we do not know who the, the final, what the final staff will be that returns. Um, uh, and so this is, this is assuming that everybody that received the contract back in February returns. Therefore, if they return, they would receive the stipend. If individuals choose to, to terminate their employment with us before the start of the school year, then obviously the new employees aren't gonna get this. So this will be the high end number. We would anticipate that the number will go down. 
Uh, it's not going to be uh, handed out until the end of the first quarter. So we'll present at the September board meeting the actual individuals and how much they're going to uh, receive. And so uh, we would anticipate a savings in here. We just don't know what because we have to figure out what the final staffing situation is. I do have a question. I'm just thinking back. Have we done this retention bonus in the past? I don't think no, so. No, this is uh, part of uh, what the ESSER's uh, money, the, the federal funding has talked about, okay. has been designed and, and was sold as a way for retaining staff given the, the pressures and the stress that, that staff throughout the country uh, have been under with COVID. And so they specifically stated this would be a kind of uh, a good okay. use of those dollars. Okay. And so ourselves and many other districts are looking to do the same thing. I was on a call today uh, with superintendents from around the county, and uh, they were all talking about the same thing, that many of the stuff, many of the things we're talking about here are very similar to the, what they're doing. The only difference is whether they're going to do a dollar amount or a percentage increase, and is the percentage increase more or less than us. But, but districts from around the county are doing the same thing, and quite frankly, from the East Valley also. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? No? Okay. I'll need a motion. Um, I move to approve a one-time retention stipend for all staff as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. Um, consideration or approval of student growth stipend. Again, very uh, much what we uh, presented uh, on the 24th. Uh, the biggest issues there are a few details that we're still working on, which is the biggest one is when it, what's going to be the baseline data that you're going to choose to see the, the 200 uh, student growth. Uh, we, we are uh, batting around the, the several ideas. Again, this isn't going to come out until the March, uh, uh, next March, um, because of the 100th day. So we'll have those details worked out, and we'll share them as soon as we get them worked out. We're not going to wait till March and surprise everybody, but uh, there's a little bit of time to, to figure out all the specific details on this one. Okay. Any questions on that? Okay. I'll take a motion. So I move to uh, um, approve the one-time approval of student growth stipend as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. Um, okay, approval of three additional hashtag four professional development days for certified staff for 21-22 school year. Uh, again, as was presented uh, at, the, at the last uh, board meeting, uh, this information has also been presented to uh, staff, uh, both the CCC group, and uh, we had uh, I made three presentations throughout the day on a week ago, April 7th, about this. And unless the principals are hearing something that I haven't heard, there has not been any concerns or, or questions expressed about this. And so I think this is just an outstanding way to, to and, and with all pun intended, to move us forward under hashtag <laughs> forward. So. Okay, any questions? Uh, just, this is just like, this is only for the 2021-2022 school year. And then if it continues, right. it would just be something that would be Approved every year, right? Right. We what we'll okay. do is we'll monitor and see what the the federal funds are available, and uh, if we can, we'd like to push it out for two or three years. But as of right now, the approval is just for this coming right. year, and then we'll address future years uh, okay. depending on money. I, I just want to. I don't have a problem if it would right. continue. I just get yeah. No, no, and that's good clarification. Okay. Nothing else. I'll take a motion. I move to approve adding three additional hashtag forward professional development days to certified staff contracts for 2021-2022 as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion <laughs> carries five to zero. <laughs> okay. Um, 8.6. Seven, consideration and approval of additional days for instructional coaches for summer 2020, for 2021. Uh, and this is uh, uh, an additional piece to what was discussed uh, on the 24th. And the essence of it, since you approved uh, the three additional days, now the planning takes place. And given the time and everything else that's going on, we're just asking for days during the summer for the, the coaches, both content and instructional, to help with uh, the CIA department go ahead and do the planning. We've already started the planning, but we'll have to, to go beyond just uh, the current year 
And so I would just recommend approval so that we can make sure that the, the quality of the PD for our staff um, uh, when they come back is top notch. Any questions? Yes. Comments, concerns? That's a good idea. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. <laughs> okay, I'll take a motion. All right, I move to approve the additional days for instructional coaches for summer 2021 as presented. I second. <coughs> All right, Lisa. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. All right, um, discussion and consideration of approval for additional positions for 2122. This would be the additional positions that were part of the presentation on the 24th, so no, no changes, nothing uh, significant on that, so I'd recommend approval as presented. I had a quick question. Yep. So um, right now we have, uh, you know, so at school, the total numbers are based on in-person and, and uh, online. Yes. So is this in addition to that? So like if we had a school that had, you know, 20 online kindergartners, is that, I mean, just kind of explain to me how that how that would work. With additional additional staff, right. um, what we're looking at is is a, a major concern that was was presented throughout the year. To be totally honest, um, would just be the instructional model. Um, actually, you saw it in Jeff's in Jeff's presentation with right. the swivel and trying to balance right. between the two. So, right. the idea is to is to provide teachers to just handle the virtual kids. What it specifically looks like is really we're working on a couple plans because it's gonna be dependent upon how many kids are there. So we may have bands at the elementary level and so a teacher, the virtual teacher may in fact have two or three grade levels. Uh, so we're gonna work out those details, but they would be dedicated, I'll say this hesitantly, they'll be dedicated solely to the virtual. If we're at such a high number, let's just say 97% in person, then we may make, we may make adjustments uh, for how they're utilized. However, note that there are some bills passing uh, the legislature right now, one in particular, that will provide opportunities and avenues to either do distance learning, hybrid learning, or uh, virtual learning in a manner very similar to this year and get 100% um, ADM. And so we may look at a part of hashtag forward is anytime, anyplace, anywhere for, uh, for teaching kids and for kids learning. And so we may look to use some of these individuals to, to push f um, some of the ideas that we're trying with hashtag forward. So there's a little bit of flex on what we do with it, but it's it's designed first of all, to take care of the virtual kids. Then second of all, depending on the numbers, we may make some adjustments, but it would then just allow us to, to possibly even do a pilot program with hashtag forward and see how we get kids doing both virtual and person at the same time. And kind of the idea is to make sure that a teacher is not teaching yes. both virtual and yep. the in person yep. at the same time. Yep, they will not be next year a teacher right. in the classroom. Uh, well, I shouldn't say it that way because the, the, the virtual people will be in a classroom, but if you're teaching virtual, that's all you'll have. If you're teaching right. in person, that's all you'll have. Okay. I have a question. In order for this to be successful, we really need a grasp on how many kids will be virtual. Right. How do we get accurate numbers and what is the responsibility of that, parents to get that information to us? That's the difficulty. Um, uh, if, if we go based on uh, what we've done since the pandemic, uh, we won't have accurate numbers until they show up on July 26th, whites of their eyes. We will continue to work. They're already doing it. There, there's a number of things that are taking place beginning uh, uh, in uh, next week. We're gonna do online registration, getting parents to, to fill out the forms. So we'll have an idea who the students are that are, are gonna be in our system. Our principals are currently working with parents to see what the idea is when they come back. The biggest problem is um, we had anticipated there might be a slight spike coming out of spring break. Call today with Pinal County Health said they have not seen it anywhere in the county. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden you may be thinking before spring break, well, I'm not sure if I'll bring my kid back next year because I'm anticipating this. Well, coming out of spring break and now you might have a totally different solution. Even someone who's a little hesitant today or even uh, July, June 1st may make a different decision on July 15th. So we're, we're gonna con continue to communicate, but that is a big unknown. We would anticipate given the numbers of kids we have right now in the system attending in person, that we will be in the 95%, 90, 95% range for in-person learning next year. We still wanna give the option of virtual just because uh, there's some individuals that will like virtual for any number of reasons 
Um, but that is our big problem. We'll keep asking, but uh, honest to goodness, I believe it'll be July 26 when they lock at the door when we, when we really figure out what our final numbers are. So I guess one last question. So let's just take one school, for example. <clears throat> if we have that total number of students at that school and they had 10 teachers, yeah. the number of students didn't necessarily increase and you have both online and, right. and in person, are you gonna take the teachers there and you know, distribute, you know, evenly? I mean, does that make sense? I mean. Yeah, it, it, I'm not, I, I think so. What we'll do is, is um, because that teacher and because it's virtually, is we would anticipate that that one teacher could be taking all the uh, second and third graders for all the schools in the district and being the teacher of record for all right. of those kids. Uh, and doing it online, they may be doing it from a classroom in school, you know, at Symington, but they would be actually teaching all of the kids that are online. So we anticipate that that the 95% will collectively pull all the kids together. High school, middle school, slightly different problem we have to deal with, um, but but that's where we anticipate that we'll be readjusting what that individual looks like. High school, middle school, you may have, if I have a math teacher, you may have some where the job is uh, uh, both virtual for this period, but then another period, they may be in person just because that's the way the schedule worked out. Our issue will be once we hire these people and hand them contracts, it's not as simple to say, adios, you don't get it. So we're gonna have to adjust once we once we make the hires uh, and then adjust what, what their work um, uh, job looks like. Um, and so that'll be, the, that'll be the, the piece that we'll have to work on over the next several months. Right, so that, that was kind of my next question. Are you gonna like, Hire first, and then hope we can figure it out, or no, I, hire I mean, as I, needed. Right. I, I think this is the first step. Now that, that we have approval with this, I mean, Bruce and 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 the committee have been working on it already. But now that we have a formal, this is it. Move forward. Now we're going to try to button it up. It's it's that tough spot of trying to close out this year and open up right. next year. And so um, uh, we will not wait till July one to advertise because then obviously well, right. we lose but we'll make a decision in the next month about what do we think it's gonna take, and we might do an initial set of advertising, I'm brainstorming here, but initial set of advertising and do some hiring, and then maybe a second stage just based on what we're seeing as potential return, uh, the number of students that are returning. But, but there is a little bit of unknown as we move forward with this. All right, I'll take a motion. I move to approve the additional staff through the, throughout the district for the 2021-2022 school year as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. Uh, technology infrastructure upgrade. Okay, again, this was presented the one thing uh, at the last board meeting. The one thing you will see is some of the numbers as we get hard bids come in, will come in at slightly different numbers. Uh, and so therefore you will see, I think I was, we were projecting out a slightly lower number for the virtual servers. I think it was around 150 and it came in at 220. Um, uh, but generally speaking, these two, these two uh, infrastructure increases were within the range of what we had presented, uh, but one a little bit more expensive, one a little bit uh, uh, cheaper. And so it's still within the, the uh, we still have the funding available through Essers. It is still, the rationale for why we need it is still the same as what we presented. But I do wanna point out the numbers moved a little bit and that's probably gonna happen on any number of issues as we move forward. Uh, we did the best guesstimate for what we had for, for target things, but once you get them to give you a bid, sometimes it changes on you a little bit. But uh, I would go ahead and recommend a, a approval as presented. Any questions on that?
Nope. No? All right. Take a motion. All right, I move to approve the purchase of upgrades to the district technology infrastructure under the one TPA contract <laughs> as presented. Do I have to read all the numbers? No, you're fine. Let's read the whole thing. Yep. Yes. The whole thing. GPA no. contract <laughs> one no, six no, no, dash. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a second. I second. <laughs> all right. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> but motion carries five to zero. Uh, discussion consideration of approval wireless access points. This is a, a little bit of an increase as we as we talked about um, uh, moving to one to one. One of the things that came up in the leadership meeting was the notion of access points that are, and availability of access points and how many we needed. And so it was a little bit higher than we anticipated. Again, the funding is available under the ESSERS, so there's not a problem with that. I just point out that that so the totality of the last agenda item and this agenda item is slightly higher than what was presented last. Uh, at the last meeting, I think the presentation the last meeting was 150 and I want to say 550. I could be off on my numbers, so you run about 800. I think with these all three together, you're you're running mid eights to uh, to maybe just short of 900,000. So it's about 50 to 100,000 more. But again, it's within the ESSERS funding, and it is critical for us to be able to run um, the one-to-one -one computing that uh, that we have the access points in all the elementary classrooms. Any questions, comments? No. Okay. All right. I'll take a motion. All right. I move to approve the purchase of additional wire access points as presented. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. Oh, sorry. Aye. Um, okay. Consideration of replacement of the I iMac computers for CHS CTE lab. Is this those two, or yeah. am I missing something? This is a new request. Um, part of what we said, if you remember, we had a conservative budget that we built based on ESSERS dollars, and we're still waiting on the final dollars that come out of ESSERS. Uh, but uh, even in our, our, our uh, effort to make sure that we looked holistically across the district, I will tell you that as you make this presentation and you make it to a uh, variety of different groups, all of a sudden uh, people's eyes get a little bit bigger and say, well, what about, what about, what about? So you may have some things that come across over the next couple months uh, because there's new issues that maybe uh, people hadn't expressed um, uh, quite as uh, eloquently as we needed. <laughs> and this would be one of them. It's a desire, it's a needed um, uh, fix up. Uh, John, you can correct me if I'm uh, right or wrong or Chris, but it's been several years since the replacement and because of the COVID last year, the replacement didn't take, didn't take place. Um, we had, and we will present them at the next board meeting, but we had four kids uh, compete and win at the national level uh, in, that, in those programs, uh, but we need to have uh, state-of-the-art uh, uh, computers, and this is a situation where we thought it was just critical to get those computers in. Given some of the flat or slightly declining uh, federal fund budgets, meaning CTE, Title I, Title II, et cetera, uh, we chose to look at ESSER's dollars to, to pick this up, uh, and we decided to go with the top of the line versus the lesser one because that way, if those dollars aren't available, then these particular computers have the new Intel chips in them, and that would, would make sure that they, if there's upgrades, they will have had the latest and greatest. So I would recommend approval as presented. I do have a question. I'm sorry I didn't notice this earlier. Um, Usually the initiated by and submitted by fields are filled out and it doesn't have it on this one. So could you, do you have that information for us? Yeah, I mean, it'd be initiated by John uh, and submitted by uh, John Scroggum and myself. Okay. It's just the, it's just the CTE lab, which, which um, not that it matters, but what, what um, cl classes are those? Oh, it's right here. Okay, any questions? All right. All right, so I move to approve the placement of iMac computers for the CT program at CHS as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. All right, discussion consider approval of fencing on the district property north of Ranch Elementary. Oh, I think. So with this particular uh, situation, a lot of the, the, the dirt that was moved for the building of the high school and 
uh, these buildings here has been placed on the uh, in the property north of Ranch. Um, and it's a nice mound. Uh, there was hope that that maybe that dirt could be used as part of the the 24, um, uh, the construction of the 24, and be removed. Uh, unfortunately, the individual that received or the company that received that bid was not interested in that dirt. So we started to explore what do we do with that dirt because two things are happening. Number one, you got lots of kids riding bikes, ATVs on that. Uh, they kind of fly off the hills without really paying attention to what they're doing and, and there's gonna be an accident or injury. Also, we now have conveniently become a dumping ground. Uh, and so it looks like it's dump trucks that are coming because those are nicely formed little piles. It's not like somebody shoveled them out of the back of a truck and it just continues to grow and grow and grow. Um, and now we also have people dumping trash and dumping all sorts of stuff on it, and if we don't do something with it, uh, we looked at having it removed, the dirt. That'll be about $300,000. Mm -hmm. um, if we bladed it, not a bad idea, but then that pad is now higher than it needs to be at because there's enough dirt there that we would then mess up the flow of water on rain uh, onto the adjoining properties and the roads, so we can't just flatten it. And so we're still working on trying to get someone to remove it free. Uh, I just stumbled onto a possible solution just recently when I was talking to someone, but, but we haven't had a chance to discuss it in great detail. Even if we get rid of it, if we don't fence it, then it will still become a dumping ground. <laughs> so we would like to move forward with fencing. There'll be gates so that we'll still have access to, to the property. Uh, when we need it, so on graduation or something like that, there'd be access to the, to the property if we needed to get uh, access to the land lab or anything like that. We'd or still when have we it. sell the dirt. What's that? Or when we sell the dirt. Right, or when we sell the dirt. So uh, so there'll be access to it, uh, uh, to the property, um, but for right now, it's just becoming an eyesore and a potential uh, accident waiting to happen. Okay. How Wait, high is the fence gonna be? Do we know that? Six feet. Okay. Hmm. High enough where you can't climb over it. No, I'm just thinking if it's if it's too short, it's not going to make right. any big a difference. Right. And and we're also recommending <laughs> that the bar goes across the top, so it's not one of those fences that doesn't have a bar across the top, yeah. and the kids can just knock it down and then finally climb over it. So yeah. so we'll put it up so that they have a difficult time getting in there. Barbed wire as well. Yeah. Okay. I think it's a good idea. <laughs> Cattle prod. Cattle. <laughs> Electric fencing. Electric fencing. Yeah, there you go. Whatever it takes. <laughs> I, I've actually I've actually seen some teenagers in trucks driving on top of that yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. There's an accident that can happen. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll take a motion if we have no more questions. <clears throat> All right. So I move to approve the contract with Phoenix Fence to fence the um, property around the North Branch of Elementary School as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. Okay. So we're at 8.13. Uh, um, discussion consideration for approval of the superintendent agreement for Dr. Wyman. Um, so do we just go right into 8.14? Yes. Yep. All yep. right, so I'm gonna make a motion that we uh, go into executive session. Second. Who was that? Me. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. I assume that they can leave, correct? They don't need to stay. Okay. They're so upset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't go so fast. <laughs> Look at that. That's like <laughs> Anybody want to trade one of their I'll Snickers for something else? Oh, I don't have a Snickers. There's more? Oh, okay, then I can put these in and take Snickers. Yeah. Or, <laughs> Just for me. 